Yo, it's your boy Picante Nino coming at you with another Zerker guide. Today we're going to be going over PvP matchups against Awakening Berserker. Everyone keeps on coming up to me on my stream and be like, Hey Picante, am I bad at PvP? I cannot CC this class, or I cannot CC that class, or I can't fight against a witch or wizard, or it's impossible to catch a ninja. Uh, yes, we're going to be going over that today. I'm going to be going down the list of all the classes and telling you guys if the fight is favorable towards you, or if it's just really hard fight for you in general. So, let's just start the video, man. Because I know that you guys are all asking your questions. All you little baby zerkers who are, like, starting to learn the game. These are your bad matchups. And hopefully in the future, whenever the PvP changes come out, this list will be kind of different from the patch. So, I would like to make this video right now before those changes come out. So we can have, like, a compare and contrast to see how much the game has changed from then to whatever we get the PvP buffs in the future. So yeah, let's just jump into it. Mm. Okay, so I split up the Awakening Berserker matchup tier list into eight different categories. The bottom being the most easiest, all the way up to the top being very unwinnable. So, if you guys notice that there's a different category all the way at the bottom called Not a Fight. This is a section where I believe that whatever you fight, you really get no value out of the fight. A good push-in example would be Shy. Shy is one of those people if you fight in a 1v1, I don't think you get anything out of beating a Shy in PvP. Ooh, you just beat up a Shy. Oh my god. But yes, Shy is going to be our first contender in the Not a Fight category. So let's move on. Okay, so now let's move on to the actual order which I set it up in. First up is Archer. Archer, I would say that it is actually a very winnable fight. I would actually put it in the easy peasy win category, where you should be winning anywhere upwards between 90 to 100% of the time while you're fighting against an Archer. If you guys are equally skilled, that should easily be in the Awakening Berserker's favor. Because number one, we have protected, you know, Titan Blow. So, if you're using Titan Blow against an Archer, just keep on spamming that Titan Blow. They're going to get caught. And if they also want to engage up on you and be in that melee range, number one, you have the grabs. And number two, you have a Devastation. So, there's really no reason why a Zerker should be losing to an Archer consistently. But they should honestly be winning almost every single fight against an Archer. Okay, which Wizard? These two classes, I'm just going to lump together. But honestly, these classes have gotten a lot better um, over time. Because a lot more people are starting to understand that these classes are actually kind of pretty spicy if you know how to play them correctly. So I would say that they're in your favor. Honestly, I was going to put them under easy peasy win. But honestly, these, these Witches and Wizards in BA1, they're cooking. So they're cooking, obviously. If you expect to fight any other wizard that isn't in BA1 or is a BA1 rat, this will easily jump down to easy peasy win or very winnable. But the ones that I'd be fighting, I would say I would just put it in a winnable category where you're winning like anywhere between 70 to 80% of your fights against these two classes. Of course, they could still wreck you if you make one mistake and then you get slowed and they blow you up with one skill. But obviously, if you are a Zerker, just play it slow against these two classes and you should be fine. Most Zerkers that are like learning the class brand brand new, they just want to run in and do things. But this class would definitely checkmate you if you don't play slow against these two. Now let's move on. Okay, so Guardian is an actual very special class that Berserkers fight against because most of their skills slow. And what really counters Awakening Berserker is slows and back attacks. Guardian does not have the back attack category, but they dominate in the slow category. So, I would say that half their kit doesn't affect you, and so on and so forth. I feel like this class is slow, which makes it super easy for them to grab. I feel like there's just many pros and cons against this class, which makes it very fair for us to fight. So, I'm going to put Guardian as our first fair category. Let's move on to Striker. Now, Striker is one of those classes that everyone deems as OP and has a crap ton of damage. But as long as you catch the Striker while they're doing their mid-air jumps, you can actually just grab them out of it. Or if you don't want to take that risk, you could just slow them with Devastation because their hitbox is strangely on the floor still. So, I say that this fight is actually fair in your favor whenever you're fighting a Striker. Okay, so moving on to Warrior. Warrior is actually the most fair class in the BDO entirely because 
Warrior is one of the most balanced classes in the game. You guys could fight me on this topic all the time. But if you want to look at a very balanced, vanilla, neutral class that's like right smack in the middle between all these classes, it would be Warrior. And Warrior actually falls in that category whenever you fight them one of one as an Awakening Berserker. But since Warrior has a very fast grab and they have a bunch of frontals that they can mix you up with, I would say that Warrior is either in the fair category or in the fair in their favor category. But the Warriors that I fight, they're very skilled. So honestly, it feels like the, the just the grab itself puts it a little bit on their side of, yes, the fight is fair, but it's a little bit in their favor. So we're going to put Warrior there. Moving on to Mystic. Mystic is actually just a better Guardian in terms of like fighting and 1v1. And honestly, I'm just going to put Mystic on their fair in their favor because uh, there's not a lot of people that play Mystic, honestly, in PvP. The only one that I know of is Damo, and I, I struggle fighting with him. But other than that, if you don't fight a Damo, honestly, it's like a little bit fair in their favor just because they have a slow and they have a grab. And they also do have a suction, which could keep you into place. But as long as you actually retaliate with the slow back, it's not too hard to counter their slows with your slows and their suctions with your iframes such as Giant Leap. So I feel like it's a fair fight. You should honestly be winning like 60 to 70% of these fights. You know, it shouldn't be like a complete blowout. So like the fair category is 50-50, and then the fair in your favor is like 70-80, and so on and so forth. But yeah, moving on to Meiwa. Meiwa is actually... This fight is actually really hard to understand, because you have people who play Meiwa, and then you have people who play Meiwa as like the high, high tier of PvP. And I've never seen a Meiwa that's just kind of like mid, or just like learning the game. The Meiwas that I fight are straight up assassins. So the Maywell is a category. I'm going to put them under a very hard fight. Well, not a very hard fight, but it's kind of a hard fight. And honestly, if you mess up once, you basically die. But the main ones that I would be, I'm, I'm between fair in their favor and hard AF fight. I think I'm going to put them under fair, but it's a little bit in the Maywell's favor because we do have a lot of tools that counter them, such as our devastation. But they could also counter us back with a bunch of back attack shenanigans in terms of like movement. So with Mewa, it's it's actually in their favor. I'm actually leaning in to just, it's, it's a fair fight, but it's in their favor a little bit. Now we're moving on to my favorite class to fight in the whole entire game. Musa. Musa is not a fight. All the Musas that I fight, you, you try to do anything, and you try to do anything that is not protected, you get CC. And in order for you to like engage and like continue the fight, you have to do something unsafe and then the Musa punishes you for it. So whenever you try to do anything that progresses a fight, the Musa basically wins against you. So the only thing that you could, the only way how you could fight a Musa is if you just constantly rotate Lava Piercer into a slow devastation, into a slugfest, into a giant leap, into a Lava Piercer, into a slow devastation, into a slugfest into a giant leap, and you just keep on doing that until they get tired and want to engage on you. So I consider this not a fight because the, it's already solved. If you really want to win against the Musa, you do those skills and you just keep on rotating that infinite, that infinite essay so that the Musa could never actually exploit the, the, the back attacks on Zerker. And then the Musa, same thing. The Zerker could exploit some of the gaps that Musa has with the devastation slow, but all they do is just run to the next zip code. So I would consider this not a fight. As long as you learn the fight and you understand that, yes, I really want to win this fight, it, it, it doesn't become a fight no more. You just rotate super armors until one of you guys get frustrated and you run in, guns blazing, and you're just like, yeah, let me try to get a grab, and then you get countered, and then you lose the fight. So this, this fight is not really a fight. It's just whoever can frustrate and outlast the other guy more. That's why I have this not a fight category. I know I, I know this list wasn't gonna get filled up, but like there there are some fights where you're just like, dude, this is a yucky fight, you know? So yeah, let's move on. Okay, moving on to Zerker. Zerker goes into the not a fight category. The reason why I put Zerker in the not a fight category is because whenever you look at the fights between Zerkers, it just feels like a bunch of like sharks just swimming in a circle with lava piercer, trying to see which one's gonna catch which one with the grab. So it's actually very beneficial for the Zerkers to be copying each other's moves. And whoever does the first move in the fight loses the fight because you're just mimicking the, what the other guy's doing and whoever activates the first skill loses the fight. So you guys are just there on Suck Swong and you guys can't do anything because you guys are just looking at each other like, is he going to do Lava Piercer? Oh, I did Lava Piercer. 
Oh, snap, I did Lava Piercer first. Let me just run away from them so they're not in range for them to get countered by their own Lava Piercer. So it's just like, whoever does the first skill with Awakening Berserker just loses the fight because the other skill would come out after and just counter theirs. So it doesn't feel like a fight against Zerker. It's just you just going in circles trying to play, you know, grab butt with the other Zerker. And it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like there's any kind of skill or any type of, like, learning there whenever you're already at the highest level of fighting a Zerker v. Zerker. This is, like, not the funnest match you could possibly have in 1v1. Okay, moving on to Valkyrie. Valkyrie is not a fun fight either. Valkyrie is one of those fights where either they could just play very lame and stay in, in frontal block and just stay in there forever and then just like iframe a couple of times to go up in the air and then you could just grab them when they land. So honestly, like Valkyrie is in in the the fair fight in your favor because they're just so immobile and they're 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 just blocking the whole time. But if a Valkyrie knows how to like counter your grabs, you're gonna be in for it. But still, it's a very winnable fight for you. So it's a fair fight. Honestly, I'm just gonna put it under the winnable tab. You should be winning against Valks a majority of the time. Not all the time, but a majority of the time. Valkyrie just, is just not a fast class. And you can just honestly shake off iframe trap into a rock smash. So, like, th this class cannot react to that. The only thing that they can react to is your Titan Blow going off or your, what is it, your Feral Stampede click to move redirect, you know? So, yeah, Valkyrie should be honestly a winnable fight across the board. Okay, so Draconia. Draconia, honestly, for most people, it would be in the unwinnable tab. But honestly, against Draconia, it should be, like, either fair in their favor. This class just needs to get nerfed. Just, just as a side note, this class needs to get nerfed. Draconia just needs to be taken out of the game. But in 1v1s, actually, it's fair in their favor. They just have a crap ton of super armors. And I haven't really seen a good Drac that knows how to 1v1 yet recently. So I would just put it on their favor just because how stacked and protected the class is. Just in general. So let's move on to the next class. Okay, so Corsair. Corsair is like literally the embodiment of a class that is made to counter Awakening Berserker or any type of grab class. This class is honestly the bane to us. And depending on how they play, it could either be a very winnable fight because they don't know how to PvP. But... If you actually fight against a Corsair that knows how to play somewhat, it's actually a very hard fight because you cannot CC them. They're always in iframe or super armor. And then if you do manage to get a grab, their resistance is just going to counter your grab. So the only way you can fight against them is if you slow them and just magically get your Butterfingers on them and just grab them. That's the only way you can play against a, against the Corsair. If they want to get caught and they're just running out of stamina because you're out trading them in the stamina war, you're going to catch them. But it just requires a lot of work just to get that one window so you can actually punish them for what they are doing. It is a very hard fight fighting against a Corsair that knows what they're doing. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, Sage. Sage is honestly a iframe heavy fight with a lot of spacing and a lot of frontals you need to counter them with. Sage requires a lot to catch and a lot to even just flip the momentum on their head so you can actually start pursuing them. So I'm going to put Sage on their the hard AF category because it's like Corsair. It's very ambiguous whenever they do come out of protection. They hit very hard. They're mobile. They have a range grab. I don't know why they have a range grab, but they have it. And you, you just have to play very safe against these guys and actually like time your openings. If not, you stamina drain them by acting threatening while not also committing to the to the, the, the fight. So against Sage, Sage is very in their favor. You should be losing a good amount of fights against them. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, Hassashin. Hassashin is honestly one of those fights that I honestly pull my hair out because they have so many iframes and all that jazz. They even have a moving multi-hit protected CC that just knocks you on your butt. It, this is a very hard fight because they could just outspace you, they could just outtrade you, and they could just honestly just disappear and just mix you up. Hassashin has a crap ton of iframes, a lot of protections, and honestly one of the best moving protected knockdowns in the game. So against this, just that alone counters 90% of Zerker's kit. So this is going to be a very hard fight for you to actually fight against. It doesn't move into the winnable category, 
the unwinnable category because there's some classes that just are just completely more disgusting than Hash. Even though Hash is pretty up there, but it's still a very hard fight regardless. Let's move on. Okay, so Lon is next. Lon is honestly about the same power level as Hash. I would actually treat the Lon even more scarier than the Hash because they have more mobility and they have a lots of ambiguous knockdowns that get behind your frontal. And you know, 90% of Awakening Berserker's gameplay is throw out frontals and actually put pressure on them by trying to get grabs. But since the Lon has a lot of protections and they have a lot of just like moving knockdowns, that it is very hard for you to even pressure them because they could just outdo you just by getting behind your block all the time. Whenever you try to play defensively against the lawn or get in anywhere around their range while they're moving, you're just out. You're out. They're, they're, the class is too protected and it just goes behind your frontals all the time. So this is why Lana is a very hard fight because this fight is very space oriented in terms of protecting your frontal blocks. Even that, it might not look like the skill's going behind you. It still counts as a frontal. You guys, if you guys fight against a lot of lawns, you guys know this. You guys know this way too well that playing against the lawn is an extremely just hair pulling fight. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're moving on to Kuno. Kuno is honestly a worse version of Ninja, but the thing is, is that Kuno's kit counters the hell out of Zerker's kit because of the iframe and the mobility and just the outright just assassin nature of Kuno. I would say that Kuno actually goes into the hardy AF category. Because just in general, if you have a lot of iframes on a class, you're 100% countering Zerker regardless of what you do. Number one Zerker's weakness is, hey, I throw out a lot of frontals. Can you get behind my frontal? Oh, you can? Okay, I lose against you. And basically, if you guys notice, between all three of these classes, or all of these classes on top of here, right here, they all spam iframes. All of them spam iframes. So Kuno easily fits into the hard fight category. So, let's move on to the next one. Okay, moving on to Sork. Sork is one of those classes that have a lot of iframe spam. And if you fight against a really good Sork, it honestly could feel a little bit impossible to fight against. But, if you notice that Sork does have a lot of spammable iframes, will easily put it into the hard category. It is very hard to fight a Sork. It is extremely hard. And if a Sork knows how to fight against a Zerker, they could easily just shut you down. So yeah, I'm going to put this into the you should be losing a majority of your fights against the Sork. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, Ranger. Ranger is one of those classes where I could just guarantee you that it's easily unwinnable. This class, it, it, you just cannot win against a Ranger. A Ranger is just going to win every single fight. I refuse to fight Rangers in the BA. Specifically because how broken the class is. Ranger is one of those classes where regardless of what you try to do and how to counter it, they're just perma iframe and their dash grabs and they're just amazing damage and just like a couple of catches. It, it just, it doesn't feel good to fight against a ranger. Fighting against a ranger, if you guys fight against a decent ranger, you're just not going to win any kind of fight against him. You should be losing 90 to 100% of the time against a ranger, regardless of how good they are. So yes, ranger against an awakening berserker, watch out. You do not want to fight these classes. And if you do, it, it better be you're holding hands with someone else that knows how to fight this class. Because as a Zerker, yeah, I, I could throw in like three to four Zerkers all trying to gang up on that Ranger. And that Ranger will easily take out like about two or three of them. So yeah, this Ranger is just an unwinnable fight 1v1 against an Awakening Berserker. Let's move on. Okay, Tamer. Tamer is honestly an unwinnable fight against the Awakening Berserker. Because number one, they have a lot of spammable iframes. And then they also have a dog that's also pressuring you too. And it also sucks too because you could be comboing a tamer whenever you just magically catch them randomly. But and then their dog would just come in out of nowhere and just CC you while you're in the middle of a combo. Which makes them punish you because you're punishing them. Which feels really fair by the way. But yeah, tamer is just literally one of the better 1v1 classes out of all the classes. So I basically put that up into a ranger, I mean, into the unwinnable category. You should be losing 90% of your fights against the Tamer. And you know what? Don't even be mad about it because honestly, BDO is that kind of game where there should be fights that are just unwinnable at any stage. For example, DK versus Valkyrie or Valkyrie versus, uh, what's that called? Musa or, or Megu. There's really no way for those classes to kill the Valkyrie. 
So yeah, it kind of sucks that BDO has matchups like this, but you just gotta know that, hey man, if you're fighting any of these classes in the unwinnable category, it's not your fault that you're losing, it's more like it's the game that made these classes that completely just wrecked your game plan. So Ranger's number one, Tamer's number two. So let's move on. Okay now, we move into Ninja. Ninja's honestly the boogeyman to Awakening Berserker. The block jump is just too crazy. All of their moves are just too wild and they CC while they have linger iframes. It is just a ridiculous class to fight against as a Zerger. As a Zerger, I just tell other Zergers who are learning the matchup, hey man, the, the best thing you can do against an Awakening Ninja is to never commit into them. If you try to run into a Ninja and you try to like make something happen, you're just going to die. The Ninja's just going to block jump you and grab you. Or it's just going to you know do their little their iframe steps and CC you. There's no way to fight against the ninja other than just keep your distance and make them engage on you. And I know that's a very, very boring game plan. But yeah, that's exactly how you need to fight against the ninja. And I'm not saying that that's even going to like make you win the fight or get you better odds. It's just more likely it's going to prolong the fight so the ninja is going to make a mistake. So this is how OP ninja is whenever you're fighting against it as an awakening berserker. You're going to lose, I would say, 95% of the time against the ninja. It is just a stupid, ridiculous, hard fight. It's practically unwinnable. So let's move on. All right, moving on to DK. DK is also an unwinnable fight. It's like I put all the unwinnable fights at the bottom all together. But yeah, DK is actually a very unwinnable fight. DK basically has a lot of iframes. They could actually play against you melee or ranged. And if they decide to play against you the ranged play style, they're going to blow up your frontal guard so quick. And you're going to die just off of pressure at range before you can even run to them. So there, there's two fights. It's either you fight them at range and then you just get blown up from two miles away. Or you can fight them in melee range and they use their block jump ability and they just knock you down and they burst you. So there's really no way to fight against a DK correctly other than, hey man, I guess to where you're going to jump at. But and then their jumps have iframe lingers into a protected knockdown. So you're kind of just not wanting to basically do anything against them even if you do land a devastation on any of these classes they can still kill you with a 50 percent slow stacked on them while they're comboing you most classes whenever they have a 50 percent stack slow on them they have to drop the combo and reset the fight these classes on top they get still 100 to OU regardless of what your dr is with a 50 percent slow on them so yeah and oh also if you actually stiffen them they actually get out of stiffens a lot quicker than what you actually think so even if you do stiffen them and you try to engage off of a stiffen, all these classes will wake up from the stiffen and actually counter you. So these <laughs> these classes are kind of like, ah, oh, dude, these classes, bro. Although the unwinnable category, I mauled at these. All right, let's move on. Okay, now Nova. Nova is honestly an unwinnable fight. This class, you're not going to see it coming. You're not going to see them. They're just going to be zooming around you. There's really no counterplay against it whenever they get to that moment. And honestly, you should not be winning against Nova at all. This class is really disgusting, especially whenever they're in their Excel state. You're just not winning against it at all as an Awakening Berserker. This class is disgusting. They counter basically almost everything of what we have to do in BDO. So yeah, with that, like take that as you will. But yeah, Nova is just honestly an unwinnable fight. Let's move on. Okay, I'm just going to lump in Wusa and Megu together because they almost play practically all about the same. I'm going to put Megu and Wusa in the unwinnable category because this class is just ridiculously broken at the moment. And I'm pretty sure everyone could agree that these two classes are just unwinnable across the board between any class on the in the entirety of BDO right now. Megu and Wusa just have a good amount of protections and they have a good amount of CC and a good amount of damage tied to their protection skills. So there's really no way to like open them up or to even punish them for making a mistake because there are no mistakes. They're just moving. Unless they run into you and literally press no button at all for you to get a counter grab on them. Or not, I wouldn't even say a counter grab, just to get a grab on them. Or even a slow on them, it doesn't matter what you do. They're just going to iframe it and they're just going to blow you up while being protected. So there's really no counterplay to them, you just see them moving around. The only one that kind of has a little bit of counterplay to it is probably Megu. If you actually know where they're going to move. But still, like, you, you don't have that foresight. No one has that perfect be like, yes, they're going to move at this position, at this time, at this moment. No one has that, bro. We all play reactively. And if you can actually read your opponents to that point, then honestly, they're playing the class wrong and they're probably not that good. 
But if you're playing against someone who's about the same skill level as you, you should be losing about 90% of the time right here, about a good 80% of the time right here, about a good 70%, and then 50-50, and then you should be winning 60% of the time right here, 70%, and then 80 to 90% right here. So honestly, if you guys feel like you guys are just getting wrecked, it's probably because you're fighting these classes and, and these two areas right here. So yeah, let's move on to Scholar. Honestly, Scholar is, I would say, not a fight. When it came out, it was not a fight because all they did was just rotate super armors. But honestly, like, this fight is kind of boring. Um, Scholars don't have that many tools to pressure a fight other than, let me just iframe, let me just iframe, or let me just iframe super armor, iframe super armor, move, move, move. And they really don't got anything to, like, kill you or knock you down or put the, 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 the fight in their favor. They just rotate protections, and that's it. Like, they're... There's nothing to do. So what you do is just, you just wait for them to either run out of stamina or just forget to rotate a super armor and you just grab them or CC them. It's a very winnable fight. I would say it's fair in your favor because not a lot of people fight on Scholar 1v1 because the class isn't that interesting. But if you were talking about AOS, that's a, that's a different story. But we're just only talking about matchups, PvP matchups against an Awakening Berserker. You see any of these classes above? You know, be careful. Be careful. Okay, you, you could win. This is a very... This depends on your skill level. And these, you should be winning a majority of the, fun, the time. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Those of you guys who are baby zerkers, or those of you guys who are, are you know, old time, like, eight years plus zerkers, man, let me know in the comments below if you guys agree with the list. Because honestly, I've been doing a lot of PvP recently, especially with the new server changes. And honestly, it feels crisp. But man, this doesn't change anything in terms of, yes, man, we got new servers. This changes up the list. No, the servers being lower ping and then moving them to Central America. This kind of, this kind of list doesn't stay the, it doesn't change that much or at all. You know, so hopefully whenever they do the PvP changes, this will shift around a lot, which means that we actually have a better meta game. I really hope to see Megu and Wusa and Draconia just like get shifted around because these classes honestly need a nerf. And with that, you guys, like I stream Mondays through Thursdays on Twitch. So like give me a follow, dude. If you feel like my content's worth it, you know, give me a like and subscribe. And with that, you guys, I appreciate you guys watching and I'm going to see you guys next time.